Um, what happened was last uh, January, um, I got asked to head up family ministries here at St. John's. And what they wanted was just, they, they just sort of felt they needed a little bit of a reboot. Do you ever get to that kind of place in your Sunday school where you just, just things are okay, but you sort of like feel like you've reached a plateau or something, and you can feel a little stuck in what you're doing? Ever had that kind of feeling? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was sort of the consensus around here. And so would I just take a look at what's going on? It wasn't that things were awful or some numbers were there and we had three committed volunteers and a, uh, three committed paid people. Um, but it was just a, a desire that... Um, Maybe that we just take a bit of a look at it. So the first piece that I went to, so Catherine asked if I just outline, do we have many markers? Yeah, yeah, here we are. So I just would go through a little bit of the process that we went through from last January to where we are in September because it ended up being quite a wonderful, wonderful life-giving experience. So the first piece of it was certainly prayer. And by that I mean, like, obviously we're praying for our ministries as we go through, but this was a particular kind of prayer. This was a little, oh my God, help me kind of prayer, because hey, I'm not children's ministry. That's not my background. Youth ministry, not my background. I'm not an educator, not my background. And so it was very much, it, it, the advantage to all of that was that it was an open-ended kind of prayer. It was a what on earth are we going to do here kind of prayer. It was a, a help me. I got no earthly idea what's going to happen here kind of prayer. And the positive part of that was that then I was open to God's will in God's way. And that that's just so crucial. Like when you're stuck in something, if you can get to that helpless place, throw out your left brain organizational place, throw out all your best intentions, your good desires, your bright ideas kind of place, and get to that helpless place where it is God's will in God's way, in God's, in God's time and stuff. So prayer was central to it as I headed into it and ran through it, uh, through it all. The second piece that I would, word that I would give you would be consultation. And um, I went out to find out what was going on in the ministry, uh, what we were doing, and, um, and what I used for my tool in this is something called appreciative inquiry. Are you familiar with that? Oh, do become familiar with it. It's really good. The diocese um, sponsored several workshops for both clergy and laity in appreciative inquir inquiry in the last couple of years. The website's on here. Is it? Is it on there? Yeah. Oh, good. And what it does is, uh, the appreciative part is you pay attention to things. You learn how to slow down and pay attention to things. And the inquiry part is you learn how to ask questions. And then you listen to what you hear back. So fundamentally what I began to do was I asked the, I'll tell you what the questions are in a minute, but I asked questions to discover where we were at. What's our current state? And I asked questions that were dreaming questions about what's working and what do you want more of that's working. And I asked those questions of a whole lot of people. I went obviously to the teachers that were in the program currently. I went to the church school committee that was responsible for them. I went to people who occasionally helped in the church school. I went to people who just hung around and wanted to know what was going on in the church school. So I went to a lot of people and I went to parents as well. I probably, I can't remember how many interviews I did, but I probably did about 20 interviews, roughly, with this whole host of people, and I asked them all the same questions. Uh, tell me what is working really, really well. When have you felt excited and alive and engaged and connected through the children's ministry uh, to Sunday school? Tell me your stories about that. Tell me what's working really, really well, and tell me, too, what you'd like to see more of, and tell me just the sky is wide open dream for me. Give me your wishes and your dreams about, about Sunday school at St. John's. Just tell me. Basically, tell me anything you want to tell me, but I keep it within a very positive framework. It's not time to go back and undo all the problems and the fights that have been going on in, in regretfully in any church land. It's the time when you focus in on what is good, what is working. And, and that basically is where is God at work right now?
in our lives, in your life, in my lives, and the lives of the community. That was key to the bit. So you do that consultation bit, um, and what it was wonderful, I gained all sorts of people's perspective on what was going on in our church school. I mean, it stopped being my perspective that I thought I knew what was going on, and it stopped being the, um, the teacher's perspective of what they thought was going on, and it stopped being the parent's perspective of what they thought was going on, and I got this like kaleidoscope picture of all sorts of perspectives of what God was doing in our midst. It was a fascinating, just a fascinating process. Um, so that was the consultation piece, and um, I think your sheet has a, the as, they linked up the assessment and the consultation together uh, as separate words, but I kind of put them for you as one word. And um, uh, the second part of the consultation, first part was the appreciative inquiry. The second part was um, the resource exploration, because, right, I'm not children's ministry. I've got no earthly idea what would work well for the children. So I began there to go to get some resources. And I talked to colleagues uh, that I know who are in family ministry and children's ministry in particular. I talked to colleagues there, sort of in other <coughs> churches around about. I went in-house to Catherine Keating because she was here, and she became sort of a touchstone for me as I went through this because she has a love for kids and a background in it, right? Uh, so I knew I had that. And we also actually together, Catherine partnered with me on this, we went to other people who are sort of officially doing children's ministry, not in churches, but in our theological institutions. We did some conversations with those kind of people. So we harvested a lot of resource information as well. And I quite quickly found, well, I move into the discernment piece. I quite quickly found that when, that actually I, this is probably not a good thing to say in this room, but my ignorance was a real asset because I needed, I realized that I needed resources for the church school that would work for people as dumb as me, right? I mean, like, I can, I'm probably not a typical parent because um, I do the clergy thing as well, and I've done a lot of theology and training, and I've taught Bible and all of that, so I'm not a typical parent, but I'm typical in the sense that I'm not children teaching. I'm not teaching children. I'm teaching adults is my main focus. So then when I look at children's ministry material, I'm looking at it at the eyes of some of the parents would look at it and say, how does this work? I'm a parent volunteer in church school. What am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to do this, and then I'm supposed to do that, and then I'm supposed to do this, and then I'm supposed to do that. I mean, so many of the resources that I looked at were just so complicated that I just, whew, it didn't work for me. So I went to some sort of basic discernment tools. Uh, I had to look, um, and, and uh, um, to do this discernment, I'll, I'll give you sort of an illustration of how I do discernment. Um, um, I had to look for a curriculum that used common themes, and I had to look for a curriculum that would work for the potential helpers that I had to do it, and I had to look for some people to lead this ministry because it was clearly not going to be me. <laughs> you know, that wasn't going to be my place. So I had to take all of the information that I got in all of these conversations and match it up to what I was finding in the resources out there and see what would work. And there's a real simple discernment tool I'll give you, and you can use it anywhere, anytime, any place. It's just put your hands together like this. Just close your hands together like this, real tight, real tight, and just feel how that feels. Just, just feel it. Just feel how your fingers feel crossed together and your hands clasped together like that, and you just feel it. And then I want you to change your grip. So it's your unnatural grip. Put the other thumb on top and the other finger on top and feel that. And how does that feel? You know how awkward it feels? How strange it feels? Okay. When you hit the right curriculum for you in your place, it'll feel like this. <laughs> you know? When you hit the right person to run your ministry, it'll feel like this. It's that sense of connectedness and wholeness. Everything is in place. Oh, this fits, this matches, this feels right. So I did a discernment piece around all the information I collect. I did a discernment piece around that on what fit. And um, 
we came to a way to move forward into an alignment. The first thing, one of, one of the things that came to fit for me was all the time I spent with Catherine Keating, I watch eyes too, right? And her eyes, she gets so excited. We're out doing this resource stuff with these educators. It's all their talk is going over my head, right? It's zinging over my head. I'm watching her eyes sparkle. She's always in my office wanting to talk about this stuff. I watch her eyes sparkle and the penny begins to drop on me. <laughs> I think I got a match. <laughs> I just think I might have a homegrown leader who is A, excited about the curriculum, decided about the development, excited about the people, loving the children, knowing the place. So I think I've got a, a, a match in that. And then I go in the discernment piece, the other word that is there is alignment. And we just found that what, what occurred was this fabulous alignment with the adult church and that became just sort of one of the key things for us as we moved forward. Um, just describe the alignment. One of the things around here is, um, is we talk about transformational teaching. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not giving you a program how to doing this. I'm telling a story from St. John's and our words around here are around transformational transformational teaching. We're a teaching church, a learning church, a growing church. The words that come out of Drew's mouth and my mouth are all about spiritual growth and about having your lives changed. Encounter Jesus, rub shoulders with him, and you'll be different the next day, the next minute, the next hour. That's what we talk about. So we needed something in the children's world that would also be transformational. So we went to a, a type of, Catherine will describe it more to you, a type of program that takes the children to a transformational place. Material, that's transformational based, that can land in their heart because of the reflective way that we've built into doing it. So the transformation was a big piece. The other part was the alignment, that we have four principles that we use here in our small group ministry. It's basic small group ministry stuff, right? You have community, you have study, you have worship, and you have service. Fundamental stuff in small groups. Well, the bright idea was not mine, but came out of all of this consultation stuff. Why isn't our church school just run exactly the same way? So our church school program includes all those principles too of social time of study, time of worship, time and of service time. Maybe not each week, but over the course of a month, those are the same principles. So they're talking the same language. The adults helping in the children will hear the same language as the adults everywhere else buzzing around here. And the third part of the alignment was the name change. And you'll hear it as I've talked in the last few minutes. It was called church school around here. And we've ch we changed it to children's ministry. And we changed it for a number of reasons. It was simple. It was more in alignment with the other words that we use around here. It was more service-based. And we want a service-based community around here. Those are the values that we teach around here. It's simpler. It's more modern. It gets you out of that school mentality <laughs> into a transformational learning and service place. So we became children's ministry. So that's basically it. Prayer running through it all talking to a bunch of people using the appreciative inquiry stuff, doing discernment, heart-based, what's fitting, what would really work for us, and using as one of those key things that we wanted to align it with where we went. And then we went into implementation. I'm going to pass it over to my dear friend Catherine for that. Do you need this microphone? Um, does this one work? Yeah. No. Use the one okay. Thanks, Anne. You're welcome. I didn't even ask if there were questions. <laughs> How's our time? Oh, they're really wonderful questions. I thought you could see. I didn't ask I need the microphone. Oh. <laughs> Uh, he asked whether I talked to children in the Appreciative Inquirer interviews. It was a great question. I actually I talked to teenagers. I didn't actually talk to the children. That might have been really wonderful, wonderful, good, good question. You can do the same kind of interviews with children for sure. And you just change your words, change your phrasing. And what you want to get is that point of excitement in people, where they feel really connected, really alive. You want them to talk from their feelings and from their experience. And then you draw out what they value. Those words you'd have to tweak for kids a little bit. But if you go on the clergyleadership.com website, Rob is wonderful in supplying resources. He's got all sorts of questions and questionnaires that you can use as you go along. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, well, uh, it was really a privilege to be working alongside Anne as we were 
coming to this point. Um, I'm usually wired, but not necessarily for sound. <laughs> but anyway, um, and one key thing was choosing a curriculum. The, cur the book that Anne chose, the curriculum that Anne chose, is the Jesus Storybook Bible by Sally Lloyd Jones, and uh, where every story whispers his name. Now, the the mantra, if you will, of our, of our parish is to know Christ and make him known. So that really resonated with us, to know Christ and make him known, and every story whispers his name. So uh, Sally Lloyd-Jones rewrote certain Bible stories with this in mind, that there would be an obvious making the Christ connection, as that was my big thing, that we make the Christ connection. So it's more of a natural connection in this uh, version of the children's storybook Bible. And we used that, and we also bought the curriculum. The one thing we discovered was, I know maybe your place is different, but in our place, our children don't come to church every Sunday. So they don't come to children's ministry every Sunday. So we were trying to figure out how we could close the gap. And we decided that every story would be done three Sundays. So it would be a Sunday one, Sunday two, Sunday three. And um, we looked at the curriculum, the way it was divided out, and they had activities. They actually had like about three activities for each lesson. So what we thought, well, we'll try to divide those activities, Sunday one, Sunday two, Sunday three. And so to make it a little easier. And the Jesus Storybook Bible curriculum comes with a DVD that animates the story and is narrated by David Su Suke? Suchet? Oh, I can't remember his name. He's, a well he's Poirot. You know Poirot? Yeah, yeah, he's Poirot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and he's got a wonderful voice, and the, th the story is animated. So we're trying to think, how do you present the same story in three different ways? Because some kids might have been there. So it's really funny. Uh, that was what was... Um, Valerie resonated with me so strongly today, so I'm going to revisit this and I'm going to try to let go a little more and let God. But um, although I'm um, an abstract, random thinker, I am very structured <laughs> and uh, in my own little way. Uh, last Sunday, we were doing this chapter, The Terrible Lie, Adam and Eve's story. Very heavy for children, but it's very heavy for adults. And um, the way it was told it was really great, but there was the memory verse that ha we have every week that we kind of struggled with, and it was that we have evil in our hearts. And so I, I said, Dan, I, I, can't, I can't live with that with our congregation and our children. We want to be positive and uplifting. So I found a, a verse that was right in that chapter, and it's when God called to the man, where are you? Just spoke to me so loudly. Where are you? Where is God calling to us? So we're going to try to pick up on that memory verse for some other things that we can do with the kids. When we introduced the story, we started with some wonderings, which is interesting. And I used a model that I've talked about before in making the Christ Connection a think aloud model that comes from the school system, but we called them wonderings. And it's the first Sunday as the children are just listening to the story told by a storyteller from our parish, one of, the, one of the four other volunteers with whom I work on the leadership team. And um, we get the children trying to focus on certain things through the wonderings. Last Sunday, these became... Instead of the wonderings, I ask the kids to think about these questions ahead of time before reading the story. I think making it a little more fluid and open with the four W's and the one H is a really good thing to think about, and that's what Valerie was talking about in the last session. So I think we'll revisit that and after I share some more information with the rest of the team. Every Sunday, we have somebody, first Sunday, tell the story with wonderings or these kinds of questions. The next thing, then, is that's in the large group. Well, you can see here, 
welcome and song. We're connecting with our choir people. Uh, they come in and help us teach a song, which is connected somehow to what we're doing or uh, our, our um, whole way of looking at Jesus leading the way and us following Jesus. So someone will come in for about 10 or 15 minutes and help us with that. This was Sunday 3 when we recognized birthdays. Then we do the storytelling. Uh, what's not on here is what happens after the large group. Every, all the children are together, all the, all the volunteers are together. And then they split up into their little study groups. And they go into different rooms, uh, the nursery, the preschool, uh, primary, grades 1 to 3, and junior, grades 4, 5, 6. Then what we do is have the kids kind of respond to either the wonderings or the questions in the small group. Talk about it. And there's usually some kind of an activity for this one. Uh, Sunday one, we didn't get to it, so we'll probably do it next, tomorrow, <coughs> is uh, an interview with a a Adam. Then the next one, an interview with Eve. And then an interview with the serpent. And they've got like cue cards. And so we're going to try to get the kids uh, built up so that they can interview each other and read. And they can digress from what's on the cards, the cue cards. And... Um, they also go away every Sunday. This idea came from Wanda Kostanak, who was here the last couple of years. Um, and she was using the Making the Christ Connection strategy. And she had the kids, for application, go home with a detective activity. And um, forgive me, I can't remember the detective activity for this, these three, but I think it was something like, uh, watch for someone who was right with God. Someone who is right with God, we know that it, the Bible is more than a book of rules, but there are rules there. There were rules here, and the kids came up, there was only one rule they had to follow, really. They didn't follow it. I thought, remember that. <laughs> and Because um, it happens again and again and again, right? So that's the first detective activity for week one. Find someone who is right with God, who's following the rules. Because we'll talk about rules as well. Why do we have them? Why did God have this rule? Was it to hurt anybody? No, it was to make their life better and to you know have the openness with him, have that relationship that we lost. The next Sunday... Sunday 2, which is tomorrow, um, what we'll do is we'll meet as a large group. We don't do birthdays, but we meet as a large group. And instead of the story sharer telling the story, we try to use these wonderings or questions and get the kids who were there Sunday 1 to tell the story, the key points, making sure that the key points are there. Then we go into the small groups and we debrief the detective activity, and pick up any other questions. In the junior group, I find they love to read the story again themselves. So I tr and they can read four, five, and sixes. So um, we do that uh, on occasion. And then um, get them ready for the detective activity for the following week. The curriculum has a take-home page for each story. And we've been grappling with when and how to send this page home because it kind of summarizes the story. So we're debating whether to send it on day on Sunday one or two or three or give it to Sunday one kids who are there and then pick up the others as we go along. Because uh, it's like giving the end of the story, you know, telling the end of the movie before you go in to see the show. So uh, we're just kind of grappling with that a little bit. It's a small detail. But uh, there's a nice page that goes home and the memory verse is on there. So And uh, I, I think everybody was really glad for that. But we have to pick up on that memory verse. Where are you? I'm really excited about that. So then the third Sunday, again, large group uh, with a welcomer <laughs> who just makes the kids feel good about being back. And this time we show the DVD. And even though the kids know the story, some of them, I'm telling you, they are sitting there mesmerized by this animated version of the story. They love it. One parent said to me, I don't want my kids looking at a video in children's ministry. 
as well it's not looking at a video it's looking at a different representation of the story and then we go back and we debrief that in the small groups how did how did you feel about that story being told like that you know did what was the part that struck you the most that touched you the most did you imagine that happening there again all the things that Valerie were talking was talking about imagination and getting the kids to wonder more on their own so that's on Sunday three and then ago, again we have three detective activities the first one catch someone being right with God second one catch yourself being right with God one of the kids said to me can I do it for myself I said that's next week and we try to do that first looking at in others and then in yourself and um, then the third Sunday is kind of finding it in the community at large I think do you remember the third one I think it was um, catch yourself forgiving someone that idea yeah I so it's it the first one is week. doing uh, catch yourself uh, being right with God uh, but, and the third one is somehow uh, being... Being God-like to others. Yes. So well, seeing it in the community at large, like where do you see it at, in the community at large? Uh, I remember the, the, the one time uh, when we were asking them to be kind, fi find someone who's being kind, like following the rules, right, uh, to others. And when are you kind to others? And, and then when have you been a blessing or someone has been a blessing to God's creation when we were talking about creation? So that kind of took them again into the world and huge with environmental uh, you know, sensitivities and that. So uh, that's the kind of workings that we're um, playing around with. So how do we do this? Oh, we pray a lot. <laughs> we do pray a lot. Uh, everyone on the team is a volunteer. Uh, that was one thing I, I wanted really a lot to do um, and it's working for us this year and it is working but we have found that we have a team of five and we were hoping to uh, nurture leadership from within the church I think we can still do it but we have to um, be a little I had a boss once who said blessed are the flexible so that they will never be uh, broken out of shape bent out of shape let me interject in here for a minute. And we have to be flexible, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I'm just going to interject because one of the things that came out of our consulting thing with the appreciative inquiry was that we discovered the level of engagement that our people wanted in the children's ministry. Mm -hmm. huh. So we had to craft a program that reflected the desires of our community. And they wanted short-term engagements. They did not want to commit every Sunday into the children's ministry. They just didn't want to do that. They didn't even want to commit, because they ski and they travel around this community a whole lot. They didn't even want to commit for six whole weeks into the... So we had to craft a program that would take into consideration the needs of our community. And, and that we've stuck with. Um, what we, but we do have a leadership team that is there most Sundays, and that's the team that I'm trying to work with to not have them have to be there every Sunday and um, we're going to talk about strategies how to do that the other person who comes into children's ministry every classroom has a helper that's where a parent can come in just once and we're encouraging them to come in to take a look see what's happening in children's ministry and if you've got a child uh, three children each in different levels come once for each child to see what's happening in the small group with them so that's how we're building up the capacity with the helper part. We also have some very talented people who are interested in the story sharing. And I think being uh, a little more flexible with how to share the story on Sunday one is going to uh, enable more of those people and excite them to become involved. Uh, they can do it just for one Sunday because you know somebody will be there for the three one of the leaders will be there for the three to make sure there's continuity um, or they if they get really excited they can do it for two or three but they don't have to do it every every Sunday uh, the other thing is that we have a new youth group coming up and the kids from that youth group some of them are very dramatic and and, and creative and have wanted to do some story sharing. So now after hearing Valerie, I think I'm going to you know, reflect on how we can maybe make that happen in a natural way. 
So I'm really excited about that. Is it perfect and is it working really well like in a well-oiled machine? Not. Heard the Bible only has 44 lessons. So if you're using it, I, I know you're going through it three times, like each lesson three times. But how's it going to work in like say three or four years when you have kids going through the same story again and again? Okay, we first the, uh, the, the yes, but first of all, um, what we're doing right now is we're going chronologically through the Bible stories, but we're stopping at Advent and doing the Advent-related stories of the Christmas, which they already know, but we, you know what, so do we, and we do it every year. Uh, I, I would suggest that after we finish the sequential part with the lectionary coming in at Easter and Christmas, then we start following the lectionary with it, which is a little different. Oh, actually, that's not what I meant. Oh. I, I meant two things. No. Um, right. One is in the adult church, they do the same lectionary every three years. They repeat it all over again, so I wouldn't worry about that. Okay. But also, too, this is a spirit-led creation, right? Three years from now, I've got no idea what this church will be doing in its children's ministry that's program. True. You want to keep open to the spirit and keep moving with spirit as it leads. Very true. Um, but there's always that option to go in with the, the lectionary. But um, right now, with those 44 times 3, that's going to take us quite a while to get through. Okay. But, um, <coughs> I was just interested in uh, the fact that you've decided not to do a lectionary based. Uh, like, I was sticking to a lectionary based so that the children's focus upstairs, uh, where it's the children and the adults mm -hmm. connecting, that the message given to the children would connect with what the parents are, the adults are hearing upstairs, mm -hmm. and then come downstairs. So is, so um, are you finding, you know, how does that work with uh, going off lectionary and doing your own thing? Well, we really talked about that and uh, decided that our children really need to have a solid foundation in the stories of the Bible. And that's why we decided to go off the lectionary. So the way we... Uh, the parents expressed a real desire within them that they didn't really feel like they were grounded in the scriptures enough and so that they were welcoming a return to some real solid, basic Bible flow stories. So it works both ways because the, the parents learn when they're with the children, right? They're syncing with the story. They're doing these questions too. They're watching the animated videos yeah. too. They're in the discussion groups. And three weeks in there, same story, a be penny begins to drop. We're made to move more slowly in life. <laughs> Plus, I just want to answer, uh, in the bulletin, oh, there's a children's ministry section in the bulletin that talks about what we're doing for that three-week cycle. It has the detective activities. Last time I put these questions in, so there's a connection with the parents. The parents are encouraged to buy the Jesus Storybook Bible. They know which story we're, we're reading on the three Sundays, so if their kids are away, they can they can read it to them themselves. So that's our connection right now with the adults. Um, yeah, so during Advent and Lent, are you only doing one story each Sunday, or are you do, you're, still doing, you're, you're still doing one story three times? Yes, there's an Advent story called He's Here. I mean, I call it an Advent story. Yeah. And we're doing it for three Sundays. Yeah. We start on the 20th and the 27th, and then the first is the third Sunday. And it's Advent, so that works out really well. And I think on the, the middle Sunday is the Sunday that we're hoping to have a family uh, Advent wreath-making <coughs> lunch pizza party <laughs> after church uh, for, you know, maybe an hour. It won't take the kids long to do their little advent wreath to take home to the family. And Anne had a great idea. She always has these great ideas about making a little package for those kids who aren't able to come, who come to church during advent, to take home and make their own advent wreath at home. So that's our idea for advent. So Christmas, we have three Sundays to do the Christmas story, and it ends right on December 24th. And you know, you think you know the story, but if you're looking at the wonderings the way that Valerie's talking about, there's so many more possibilities open. And as Anne said, we hear the story every year, 
This is why we're here, because of this story and the Easter story. They're very important. So on Christmas Eve, we made a huge decision for Christmas Eve. Can I let the cat out of the bag? Uh, we're having, as I said, choir people come in to help us with the singing, because if you heard me sing, you'd be God to have somebody come in and help with the singing. And we decided that we would highlight the Jesus Storybook Bible. So instead of doing a big pageant, we're going to have the David Suchet DVD on the screen. But our children, along with what we call the family choir that meets uh, every once a month, and then they, they sing. The family choir is what it is, parents, families with children. So I'm trying to bring in more of the kids from the children's ministry <coughs> to build that up as well. So our children from children's ministry, whoever's there, and the family choir, whoever's there, and the choir, will be singing. The title of the story for Advent is The Light of the World. So you know what hymn sta has that at the beginning? Shine, Jesus, shine. That's our song. It's not a Christmas carol, but it sure talks about Jesus as the light of the world. And so then we'll show the DVD. And then at the end, we're going to have the kids sing, we're thinking Away in a Manger or something very simple, with the family choir and everybody. Simple, you know, I mean. And we're going to be sharing the, sharing the storybook Bible, and the approach is similar to what we're doing in children's ministry, so people get a better kind of understanding of how it's working. Yeah, yeah I was just... Reiterating, it needs to be simple, we discovered around here. It really needs to be simple. People's lives are so busy. They don't want anything that would tax their lives too much, but they want quality and they want depth. Yeah. Those were some of our driving principles. Maybe they have some questions. Yeah. I was curious how many children you had gathered together for the opening. Like how many, and what is the age range of your kids? At the, at the large group, we have everybody together. Nursery, preschool, primary and junior. Goodness, we can have... Um, 25 to 30 kids in the children's chapel. The adults stay with us, like all the, the group leaders and the helpers stay with us. Um, when we get into small group, uh, we've had a, as many as 12 in each group. It, it, it's, um, it's a bit scary to think it might be growing because we're going to have to think about how we're going to split the groups, but we're, we've got a plan in, in mind of how to do that and trying to be a little more flexible. On the floor. No, they're on the floor, on the carpet, on the floor. Yeah. So I'm curious as to with your curriculum, no matter what it is, I, I am familiar with the Jesus storybook. Is there a concern or do you talk to your volunteers about having the scripture with them? Because I, I guess from a parent perspective and I want my kids to know this actually isn't another storybook. This is the Word of God, mm -hmm. and these are stories from the Word of God. I actually, the very first story talks about that, that this is a true Word of God, that we are hearing God's Word through these stories. Uh, and that's how God has told us his story. It's God's story. It's not a make-believe story. It's not, you know... Uh, like uh, what you might see in cartoons. So that first story, um, which is, th I think it's called The Beginning, uh, talks about that. And we reiterate it every now and then through the story, because if it's every story whispers his name, you know, where is Jesus in this story? And we know that Jesus is alive. Um, and the kids will respond that he lives in their hearts. So they've, they've gotten to that point quite nicely. Thank you. Um, the sheet that comes with the, the curriculum that, that you do with, with the kids at the end, um, how do you adjust that for, th for your younger groups? Because I, I, we, we use Jesus Storybook Bible for, for our youngest group right now, and uh, one of the things we struggle with is that uh, the activity sheet that comes with it is, is not really age appropriate at all. Well... Uh, I wish Charlotte were here. She would have a good answer for you. If I were that person, 
if if possible, I would do it one on one with the kids or have a, a large one like uh, on the chart. This is what we're, what's here. Uh, one of us will come and help you do your sheet and do it. F I mean, they can't do it because they can't scribe or, and do it for them. But have them have give the uh, input, you know, to it. Yeah. Did that answer your question as well? It wouldn't satisfy me to have it told the first week. I would have to, uh, like I would, anytime I teach Sunday school, I always have my Bible with me because oh. I, I oh. just, it's just an important aesthetic for me. The, chil the t leaders have a copy of the Jesus Storybook Bible with them in their classroom. I'm sorry. Exactly. She said it has to come out of scripture. Or like I want my actual Bible there as well. Yeah. I, I I don't see a conflict with the Jesus Storybook Bible. Well, some of our leaders do do that. They they have the their own Bibles with them as well. Sorry, one more question. No, I was going to speak to her point. Sometimes the sections in the actual Bible can be quite long, and some are pulling for where the kids have. So actually, a storybook always kind of comes in handy for them. I know there's been a couple passages where I've had our eight-year-olds read a script from the Bible and they're just mumbling the words. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense to them. So while it would be nice to have the Bible for a lot of the kids, I'd say under 10, sometimes you have to just pick well with them. I, um, I can speak to that, actually. Um, I have a little girl in my class right now who is... Um, I think her grandmother or grandfather gave her a real Bible and all the maps are in the back. I think it's the interna uh, new international version or something. So she was thumbing through these maps and asking, you know, why are these maps here? We were doing the wedding of Cana um, that week. And, and I was able to say to her, well, well, this is a true story, and the map shows you exactly where it happened in the Middle East, yeah. you know. Um, and so it was, I was able to sort of bring something she was actually interested in. And so I do think you're on to something there, Colleen, that you do, because the Bible is, you know, like, I don't know, just it excites curiosity in kids too, you know. Uh, th that's a very good comment, and it, I think, encourages us to look for ways to make those connections as well. So thank you for that. So we just have to watch our time yep, right here. Yeah, I think uh, oh. we're almost way over time. So. Done. We're done. We're done. Thank we're you done. very much. Uh, you can morning. talk to either of us afterwards at lunch. And I uh, hope you enjoy the lunch. It's in downstairs in the auditorium.